so today's topic it's more about the law of confidence so what is law of confidence because everyone knows nowadays so uh, because of the boom in the it especially the it sector the information technology sector the confidential information bears a lot of importance and weightage in fact the assets of this company is not about the human resources but it's in their confidential information it's in their data it's in their information it's in their source code which they develop so gone are the days where the plants and machineries were considered to be assets of the companies now the human resources the employees resources and along with those resources the confidential information the data source code the computer code these are considered as assets key assets of the, uh, these companies and everyone now has a smartphone everyone uses uh, various apps for entertainment to buy grocery to order food to check the tickets for cinema to check uh, to book the tickets for train travel etc blah 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 so we use these apps we use these computer software programs and these software programs they are uh, are run through various kinds of programs and these these data the programs upon which these uh, these programs are run they are quite vital to these companies because if anyone uh, be it employee or their vendor or supplier if he uses this information or data or source code and if he starts competing business or he starts uh, misusing it if or he starts uh, for uh, commercially exploiting for which he was unauthorized to do then that is harm not only to the company but as a whole to the economy so that's why law of confidence it has now come uh, it has gained a lot of importance uh, during this era of digitalization post 2000 it has gained a lot of exposure and it has also attracted a lot of attention from the courts in india so as we know uh, we do not have a specific legislation or enactment in india uh, related to law of confidence uh, or law uh, law related to trade secrets unlike various other intellectual property laws which we have of course which we have borrowed from ancestral model of un so that is united nations commission on international trade laws so we adopted patent laws uh, we adopted a couple of provisions under copyright act but unfortunately we do not have any specific legislation which protects the law of, uh, protects the confidential information so what is the confidentiality what is uh, confidential information let's analyze the concept what is the legal notion of confidentiality so we have summarized uh, and we have uh, studied various case laws we have also uh, referred various books and what we have defined here it's it's not defined under any books or any act or any rules of course we do not have any act but what we have tried to coin this uh, concept of confidentiality in couple of lines so let's read this so any information which is confided in another person whether natural or artificial under the circumstance of confidence the unauthorized disclosure of which will lead to unwarranted losses to the disclosing party can be defined as confidential so let's decipher let's analyze this concept so any information so that information can can be of any type which is confided in another person whether natural or artificial as we know being uh, students of law or being practicing advocates we know what is the person he can be a legal as well as natural person so any information which is confided whether it confided to natural or artificial person but another important ingredient is the next under the circumstance of confidence so it's not the in, uh, any information or all information uh, can be considered as a confidential one but it is provided it is transferred it is downloaded or it is given under the circumstance of confidence and the unauthorized disclosure of which will lead to unwarranted loss to the disclosing party this can be defined as a confidential so let's summarize it once again so any information but it has a rider which is confided in another person that is it is transmitted to another person under the term and condition of confidentiality and 
unauthorized disclosure disclosure will lead into unwarranted losses to the disclosing party is called as a confidential information so i think this is the very simply straightforward definition of confidentiality it is a concept of course we will have question and answer session and we uh, we can revisit this concept if anyone has question or queries related to this legal notion of confidentiality then now we moving to another slide next slide it's about what is really confidential information again let's go into very specific we understand now the concept of confidentiality now what is confidential information so any data so this concept is from practical standpoint so any data which is extremely vital to a business organization the unpermitted revelation of which can lead to losses and damages can be covered under its confidential information so any data which is extremely vital to that particular business entity and unpermitted that is there is no consent there is no prior consent of the disclosing party to reveal that information to third person or to reveal it to the public so these companies as we discussed that this information uh, or confidential information is very key to right now many sectors such as information technology industry pharma sector and almost all sectors because now everyone uh, relies so much on computers laptop so all in uh, even manufacturing setups they have also their confidential information in terms of processes in terms of product manufacturing the processes so they have their confidential information as well it's not that it applies only to it companies but it applies throughout the industries in all industrial segments so corporates also deploy multiple uh, uh, measures to safeguard their confidential and proprietary information of course we will see and we will also have more slides on this how to deploy security measures to protect the confidential information what are the elements of course we tried to decipher the concept of confidentiality now let's see what are the elements of confidentiality so let's read it out and let's again revisit these bullet points to understand uh, the concept of confidentiality in more better fashion so for any information to be ascribed the element of confidentiality confidentiality it must consist of the following characteristics it should have element of secrecy it must have economic value not otherwise freely available in the public domain be clearly marked as confidential and last bullet point it's about unauthorized disclosure of which is capable to cause wrongful loss to the owner of the information so for example operations of company or business proprietary information trade secrets in information about employees and clients so these are ingredients as we study the indian penal code when we study ipc or criminal laws so we when we uh, read out the definitions of offenses the we also need to understand ingredients of those offenses what are the ingredients what makes or what constitutes as uh, these particular acts as a offense so likewise we will have to also understand the elements of confidentiality so it should have element of secrecy so it should have component it should have ingredient of secrecy so trade secret it has a ingredient of secrecy then it should have economic value right so it is capable of being commercially exploited then third one it should not be freely available in public domain if it is freely available in public domain then of course it won't be called as a confidential information because it will lose out its basic character of confidentiality so it should not be available in the public domain it should be known uh to very limited number of people in the organization it sh uh, it should have very restricted access to uh, very limited persons and it should be as far as uh, the companies entities are concerned they should mark their documents their file these files as confidential they should uh, deploy all these measures of course we will see those measures as well later on and last one is the important one the unauthorized disclosure 
which is capable to cause wrongful loss to the owner that is disclosing party so these are elements of confidentiality then there is a variance of uh, confidentiality from across the sector as we discussed there is also variance of this concept across the industries let's understand so what are the varied concept of confidentiality so confidentiality as we discuss it exists in all walks of life so certain profession in fact are mandatorily required by law to protect the confidentiality of disclosing party except under certain circumstances so these are couple of instances uh, of varied concept of confidentiality and this one is very common one employer and employee right so throughout the employment an employee is often exposed to various confidential information such as business strategy of the employer company the trade secrets pricing even pricing can be treated can be termed as a confidential information list of suppliers or clients or customers of that company then other and proprietary and other proprietary information hence it is utmost important for the employer to protect this information from being divulged to competitors therefore the employee is obligated to protect all such secrets and proprietary information of the employer which he has been uh, disclosed to him in confidence so what we understand uh, from employer employee perspective is that even a pricing name of customer it would be very obvious for third person or any layman or even judges or judiciaries in fact we have been lot of, handling lot of breach of confidential information cases so it is very difficult for us to convince the judiciary convince the judges that even the name in fact we have filed one suit where the the pricing of the products and the name of the customers were disclosed by the ex employees uh, to the competitor of the employer company and which amounts to a breach of confidentiality but uh, for a, as i said so third person or judi- uh, a layman he looks very obvious what is wrong in disclosing price what was wrong committed in disclosing the name of the customer so many times everyone knows say everyone knows about the pricing because it's uh, available over google uh, google available over various uh, e-commerce websites so it's nothing wrong prices are disclosed but say the industrial sector or the domain in which you operate you need to understand the nuances of that industry as well say for example if someone is a distributor then he doesn't manufacture and he doesn't deal with the end customer he deals with the retailers he deals with the suppliers so whatever margin whatever the pricing which he gets from company and which he passes on to his supplier is a confidential one because he earns profit in those margins so that pricing is a sensitive very key to his business even the name of suppliers or the name of vendors or clients is also very sensitive to that particular distributor so we filed a suit against those uh, ex employees who revealed the pricing and the list of customers to the uh, competitor of the employer company the employees also bound to protect and keep in confidence sensitive uh, employer is also bound to protect and keep the sensitive information about his employees such as their personal data the uh, such as their date of birth address financial information which includes remuneration or their biometric as most of the uh, companies or most of the setups now have security uh, appliances uh, such as access code or biometric so that information is also to be protected by the employer right he cannot just divulge the personal and financial information of his employees without their uh, consent as well so this is the one of the concept and which is very common across the industries it's about the confidentiality between employer and employee and of course being student of law and practicing advocates we are also under obligation to protect the information of our client right in fact we enjoy the fiduciary relationship with our clients so any consultation or advice a client seeks from us and discussions related to that it's of course a confidential one and it is to be protected 
and details of such discussions consultation advice cannot be divulged openly without the consent of the client right so it is a attorney client privilege it's another example of varied concept of confidentiality of course there are various prof other profession where this fiduciary relationship comes into a uh, picture say for example doctor patient director of the company and the company so these professionals they are under duty to protect the information of the other side as well and of course there are exceptions uh, under this fiduciary relation or uh, exceptions to this attorney client privilege where an attorney may be excused or he may be uh, exempted for unauthorized dis uh, disclosure in following cases when he has bona fide uh, belief that it will result into several corporal or financial harm but again this is a very rarest of rare example but generally we advocates are bound to uh, not to disclose any confidential information of our clients so we discuss about a doctor and patient confidentiality of course this is another area where the inform confidential information uh, and uh, its uh, instances of breach they are very common in this uh, profession in this industry it's about the medical field because of personal there is a leakage of personal medical information so all the uh, medical professionals uh, along with their staff they are legally required to maintain the confidential information of their uh, patients again uh, there are exceptions where there is a prior written consent if uh, uh, there uh, has a bona fide belief if a doctor or medical professional he has a bona fide belief that the disclosure of record is of utmost imp uh, important to prevent harm to others so these are a couple of exceptional circumstances in which the, uh, that particular confidential information can be divulged even without the permission of the patient and in fact this is a, uh, a very uh, landmark case and of course we have not disclosed the name uh, names of uh, those parties and uh, this uh, case is called as mr x versus hospital y and the patient was uh, he was hiv positive and hospital authorities without the express permission of the patient disclosed this uh, diagnosis to mrs a uh, of course she was proposed to be uh, proposed to be married to that patient and this led to the patient being severely criticized and uh, ostracized by the society so it a petition was filed before the supreme court on the grounds that the hospital had failed to adhere to its duty to maintain the confidentiality of the patient and uh, hospital also breached his right to privacy so honorable supreme court rightly held that while a patient indeed or anyone any individual a legal or natural person has right to privacy under article 21 of indian constitution but this right of informing to miss a it's about threat to her life or health overrides the right of privacy so of course the patient was was diagnosed with hiv and if this information was not was not divulged to miss a who was proposed to be married then she could have been exposed to a medical threat a uh, threat to her life and of course uh, weightage or the personal health of any other person has to be given importance over right to privacy so it was further held that the uh, duty to maintain doctor and uh, patient uh, maintain doctor and patient confidentiality is not absolute and such duty can be breached in the interest of public so all these uh, uh, fiduciary uh, obligations are not absolute and uh, those can be breached of course it should not be intentional one with uh, any malafide intent but it should be in the interest of third party it should be interest of public or society at large then what is importance what is the significance of confidentiality nowadays so because as we see we are into uh, digital age so this information has occupied an important place in all walks of business and our personal lives so it is very very significant very key and very important so uh, it's it's significant and it holds a key to all business enterprises as we discuss and it's very important or very essential to uh, information technology segment of the industry so nowadays as we see we have cutthroat competition 
so all businesses are highly competitive uh, they compete with each other uh, like anything in the past and so in order to maintain upper hand uh, it is vital to protect information related to business strategies profit margin product designs etc such information if it is disclosed in the public domain without any authorization it will lead to a very significant loss to that organization so hence it is a significant it is important to maintain confidentiality then what are the advantages now turning on to uh, legal aspect so why do we need to maintain confidentiality clauses in our agreements be it customer uh, contracts be it vendor contracts be it employer employee uh, employment contracts why do we need to include these clauses all of us must have seen these clauses now as a part and parcel uh, of any agreement nowadays be it manufacturing process be it appointment of vendor for even for cleaning purposes uh, be it just appointment on contract basis but all parties uh, to agreement they include these clauses so wh what are the advantages of inclusion of confidentiality clauses in agreements so it recognizes and defines what is confidential if you do not then again you leave scope for interpretation or there is a vagueness everyone would be clueless so what was confidentiality what confidential information was disclosed to me if you do not have these clauses right so by introducing these clauses by incorporating these clauses you recognize you give something specific for other side to also recognize other side to also understand its duties and obligations under that particular agreement then second one by giving recognition to that particular information and data you also tend to give understanding of consequences of breach of confidentiality right so if there is a breach of confidentiality there is a breach of a contract because when there is a uh, when there is a breach of any provision of that particular contract then the other side will have to face the music other side will have to face the consequences of that breach then it defines the purpose for such information is sought or to be used right so it gives a concrete way to understand both parties to understand uh, to understand what is uh, confidential information and it also gives protection from unauthorized disclosure and information leaks right say for example by introducing and incorporating these clauses the party uh, disclosing especially the disclosing party ensures that it conf its confidential information would be protected from unauthorized disclosure because you also introduce and you also keep on adding sub clauses related uh, to the other party uh, that how that other party would ensure and deploy security measures to protect the confidential information which is flown from the disclosing party so these are couple of advantages and first two are very important that it doesn't leave any room for vagueness it doesn't leave room for any wild interpretation that what is confidentiality so if it is one of the aspect that you need to define confidentiality in your agreement properly and it also gives you an opportunity that look this concept or this provision was made in the agreement and upon the breach of that provision now the other side will have to face the consequences so these are advantages to introduce the confidentiality clauses in agreement then what are the obligations and duties of person uh, when you receive the confidential information from other side so protection of confidentiality so these are common slides so confidential information such as we have seen the trade secret the trade secret of coca cola or ingredients of recipes uh, during lockdown everyone started cooking at home then everyone start searching for youtube how to prepare recipes blah 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 right but you never know the how that particular kala masala or that uh, the ingredient of that particular recipe is made that is a trade secret the formula the formulas relating to uh, chemicals 
various medicines right so this is also confidential information the designs in fact we have been handling one uh, bit of confidentiality matter related to designs of the machines and which we will also uh, study in detail later on so designs of various machines uh, products it's also confidential information or process process of that manufacture right you can advise to your clients that you should execute non disclosure agreement again nda now is a common uh, terminology in uh, legal fraternity that it's about the ndas so you can always advise your client that you should execute a non disclosure agreement before you even you enter into negotiation or discussion with your customers or with your vendors or with your other business partners that execution of nda is must before entering or executing any kind of definitive agreement then employment contracts also should have these kinds of clauses related to non disclosure of confidential information we have discussed and we have seen that how employer and employee uh, the concept of uh, confidentiality in employer and employee there are ways to hold regular sessions periodical sessions and conduct trainings and impart trainings and educate your business partners your employees in particular on how to handle confidential information then you should also ask your clients or you should advise your clients that you should have policies for using mobile phones uh, laptops or using their social media accounts at a workplace right because these are the mediums or these are the channels where inf confidential information can be leaked and can be spread within a, a spread of seconds or within a spread of minutes right so there should be policy at workplace on how to use mobile phone your laptops electronic gadgets and your social media accounts and this is particularly uh, important for the employees because we have seen where in fact all of you would remember the flash mob it used to happen couple of years back when your flash mob and a uh, couple of it sectors or it companies they had their flash mob at on various days festivities and those flash mobs or those video recordings uh, were spread were posted on youtube on social media accounts and those it companies they received copyright infringement notices from the media houses or those copyright owners so uh, it's a little bit uh, unrelated to confidential information but that can be uh, also another legal challenge for using mobile phones uh, laptops and electronic gadgets and uh, operating your social media accounts it's about the protecting your confidential information through agreements right as we discussed so non disclosure agreements is a legally of course it's a legally binding agreement between disclosing party and recipient party so which obligates that recipient should not disclose and divulge any information so revealed by the disclosing party so nda is must nda is now a common event in all agreements right uh if you want to execute a separate nda you can do that otherwise you can include clauses related to confidentiality in your uh, definitive or final agreement but as we suggest that you should execute nda first before because you are going to divulge your business uh, policies you are going to divulge your business plans to the other party and if you do not enter into a final uh, definitive agreement then that uh, information divulgence or disclosure might be at risk uh, to be spread by the other side so it's better to execute ndas so we can now see the couple of uh, types of ndas so one one is one is the unilateral one where the recipient agrees to maintain confidentiality disclosed by the owner of such confidential information so it's a one sided right in unilateral it's a one sided and uh, the mutual one where both parties they make disclosures which are required to be kept secret so it's a mutual one right so it's a complementary one so there is a flow of confidential information from both ends so we discussed that why it is a significant so because of breach of confidentiality of course we'll see the what are the legal remedies available to the uh, disclosing party uh, if there is a breach of nd or breach of confidential uh, clauses 
now one of the important aspect it's about the section 20 27 because there have been lot of precedents lot of authorities lot of case laws which talk about the breach of confidentiality but the other side came up with defense about the section 27 and what is section 27 of indian contract act it's about the rest uh, agreements in restraint of trade right and these defenses were raised by mostly the employees against whom the cases of breach of confidentiality had been initiated or had been filed so what indian courts they have tried to uh, achieve the golden mean uh, on one hand the confidential information of disclosing party is to be maintained and on other hand it should not be hit by section 27 the other side should not be also forced upon to act upon on or to agree upon such terms which would be harmful in fact uh, which would uproot their living and uh, earning in the future as well so what indian courts have tried to pacify have tried to mediate and have tried to try to bring these parties uh, on the middle middle path so section 27 it establishes that any negative covenant which cannot be uh, imposed on an employee post his employment right so the unique feature of confidentiality is that it has to be maintained even after the termination or expiry of agreement right you cannot say that see the confidential information yes was given to me was imparted to me right now i am no more no more with that particular company so i can divulge that information no you cannot do that because confidential information has to be see there are clauses where it can be maintained in perpetuity or for long terms as well right you cannot take a defense that when i disclose the confidential information i was no more in agreement with that particular company or that agreement with that company or entity was expired or terminated right so uh, there are catalog of judgments there are number of judgments where indian courts have held that the enforcement of post contractual confidentiality restraints are valid one and the one of the landmark judgments it is about the vps global service private limited in the year 2008 it's a honorable bombay high court judgment which was de uh, delivered by Uh, honorable justice who is now supreme court justice mr d y chandrachur so wherein it was held that any clause that prohibits an employee from disclosing commercial and trade secrets would not be hit by section 27 since it would not result in the employee being restrained from exercising a lawful profession trade or business within the scope of section 27 so it was further held that restraint on the use of trade secrets during on after cessation of employment is not tantamount to restrain on trade right so the employee or the other side is also under obligation to maintain that confidential information even after termination or expiry of that agreement then how protection can be granted whether it's absolute of course we have seen that uh, during our attorney client or doctor patient and other fiduciary relationship slides this protection is not absolute right so there are differences uh, which can be taken up during the court proceedings or during legal proceedings any information which is already available in public domain cannot be termed as confidential because it lacks the element of secrecy as we discussed that any information available in public domain loses its character of being confidential so any information which is already available in public domain can cannot be treated or considered as as a confidential one then second one it's about the any information which forms a part of employees his own knowledge or his own skill set cannot be covered or protected under confidentiality right so for example if employee uses applies his brains applies his mind and he gains knowledge and he develop and he hones his own skill sets then uh, during the term of employment then that cannot be treated as a confidential one right no one can have claim uh, over his knowledge or skill set as uh, the confidential information parted to him right so let's analyze another 
जजमेंट ऑथॉरिटी ऑफ ऑनरेबल बॉम्बे हाईकोर्ट इन बॉम्बे डाइंग एंड मैन्युफैक्चरिंग केस ऑफ टू थाउजेंड ऑनरेबल बॉम्बे हाईकोर्ट हैज ऑब्जर्व दैट एनी इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट इज ऑलरेडी विद इन पब्लिक डोमेन अवेलेबल विद इन पब्लिक डोमेन कैन नॉट बी टर्म्ड एज कॉन्फिडेंशियल राइट so any person in employment for some period would know certain facts which would come to his knowledge without special efforts the mere use of words such as strategy crucial policies would not give it character of secrecy right as this could be anticipated by any individual with foresight right so you cannot say that uh, any uh, strategy or any policy which is uh, uh, posted on the company's website uh, a business development policy or business proje- projection and if we, if uh, that is divulged by ex employee then that that cannot be treated as a breach of confidentiality because that was already posted that was already disclosed over the website or during their annual reports then there is another reference of uh, another case law where the concept of trade secret and confidential information was discussed in polak and mulla indian contract act of course this is a acknowledgement and reference so you can easily check check this out extent of protection of trade secrets and confidential information between employer and employee is seen from the fact that an employer can protect the trade secrets without preventing the use of employee's own knowledge skill and experience even if this is acquired during the course of employment hence the test which has been laid down is whatever information can be carried by the employee in his head it may be used by him after his contract expire or in his business thereafter but all the confidential information including list of customers which cannot be verbatim copied by the employee cannot be used by him to the detriment of his employer this is on the footing that an employee owes a duty of fidelity to its employer not to disclose to others to use for his own profit the trade secrets or confidential information which he learns during the course of employment right so the bottom line of these case laws or this commentary is that it should not be detrimental it should not be disadvantage to the previous employer or previous business partner it should not be harmful or it should not be against the adverse business interest of your ex employer or your ex business partner right you can very well your use your knowledge skill set but you cannot use confidential information along with that as against the business interest of the commercial benefits of your ex employer or ex business partner or even the present one as we we are exposed to cyber space as well uh, so how uh, confidentiality is protected in cyber space so we use the internet throughout the day and we also use computer networks so and there have been instances uh, this is another topic uh, of cyber laws and uh, Uh, provisions of it acts but we concentrate and now we focus only on the confidentiality aspect so there is a there are lots of instances of uh, data theft theft of source code and other confidential and proprietary information so what are the legal provisions which are applicable against the con- against the breach of confidentiality in it space or in cyber space so uh it's a, as we know it's a now common phenomena we read out these news articles every almost every day that there is a, a data theft or breach of confidentiality and proprietary information so these uh, offenses are punishable under uh, we are very specific here we only talk about the indian laws it uh, so we have section 43a 65 72 and 72f uh, a of it act in case if there is a breach of confidential information action can be initiated in civil courts for injunction and damages of course we'll see uh, later on little bit later and uh, you have right to initiate criminal proceedings against that perpetrator as well so these are sections along with the ipc which can be uh, slapped against the offender this is another very important legal aspect and legal notion when there is a no a definitive agreement or contract uh, and then how do you protect the confidentiality or confidential information right so there was a defense raised in one of these cases of course we will read out the major points of this case that uh, there was no agreement at all 
so how confidential information was was breached there was no breach of confidential information as there was no agreement so to understand legal in implication so we can refer and we can read out this case law where the genesis or the crux of this sartman case where the law of confidentiality was deciphered by the courts so plaintiff was owner of certain drawings and he has proposed to, he had proposed to enter into contract with defendant right to manufacture certain products he shared those relevant drawings uh, for this purpose a defendant started using these drawings for his own benefit when plaintiff challenged this unauthorized use defendant argued that there was no formal contract which existed between both parties so this is of course english case law so english president so what lord green said it would not matter at the least bit whether there was a contract or whether there was not a contract what mattered was the defendants got these those drawings into their hands knowing or knowing shortly afterwards that they belonged to the plaintiff that they were obviously confidential matter and they knew that they had got them into their own hands for a strictly limited purpose since it was said that defendant was breach of uh, defendant was in breach of confidential information the high court of justice chancery division in the case of coco case and again it's a landmark case which is now referred as coco case there are three key important elements for breach of confidentiality so what are these so the information itself must be a confidential nature the information must have been communicated in circumstances importing an obligation of confidence and there must be an unauthorized use of that information which is detrimental uh, detrimental to party communicating it so these principles are key in fact these are essence and these are three conditions precedent for seeking protection of confidential information in absence of any written contract again there is a reference of brady case uh, where the principles of confidentiality of, uh, of obligations were discussed in absence of the contract so the delhi high court followed this sartman uh, principle uh, the ratio of uh, which was laid in sartman case that law on this subject doesn't depend on any implied contract it depends on the broad principles of equity so law of equity also comes into the picture that who has received information in confidence shall not take unfair advantage of it so even though there is as we discussed the, uh, there is no specific legislation or enactment for protection of confidentiality in india but still it enjoys the protection or immunity under law of equity as well so honorable delhi high court found at, uh, and restrained the defendants from abusing know how specification drawings of the plaintiff's machine which was interested to him under express condition of confidentiality so karnataka high court also in the in the case of in phase also passed the same remarks and followed the same ratio and had made same observations so what happens if there is a breach of confidentiality so what constitutes in fact so any intentional or unintentional disclosure of information it's a breach of confidentiality it's not a, uh, about the breach of confidentiality but it's about the violation of trust uh, of the other side so it is recognized as a tort in united kingdom so they have their equitable relates as well but courts in india the, this law is still evolving but courts in india have also followed the footsteps and they have recognized a uh, breach of confidentiality as a serious threat and they have restrained that not only restrained the defendants but they have also ask uh, defendants to compensate the plaintiffs in many uh, cases or many authorities so what are the remedies available to us first of all injunction right so you need to file a suit for temporary as well as permanent injunction so we understand what is interim and perpetual injunction right the suit for injunction can be filed along with the damages for any breach of confidentiality so we have been just handling a present this is a present litigation right now courts in pune and uh, where the civil court uh, which was pleased to pass uh, ex parte ad interim as well as there has been interim orders against the defendants and we were we represented the uh, plaintiff company and we filed a suit for breach of confidential information and damages against the former executive director and other defendants right so company is engaged in business of manufacturing the machines screen filters and uh, of course the customer base uh, is uh, mncs as well as uh, many top uh, customers in india as well 
and then the ex director the ex uh, executive director director divulges these uh, drawings and information to the computer the competitors and competitors started using the same technology same drawings and started manufacturing machines so we have to obtain a interim injunction in this present suit and this suit is now at the trial stage so in addition to civil remedies there are criminal uh, proceedings uh, which can be initiated which we discuss and what are the applicable sections under it act of 2000 so this is a quick checklist so what is the checklist to prevent unauthorized disclosure so always put your confidential documents away when not in use based upon sensitivity of materials keep such Uh, documents in locked desk or cabinet and it's the physical protection but you can also protect your electronic files in those uh, folders or on cloud or uh, access should be restricted one then do not leave these documents open or where uh, anyone can see it or anyone can take a photocopy or anyone can have uh, easy access and information about those documents and this information should be divulged only to need to know uh, basis that means uh, if someone is uh, working on the project that information is divulged only to him not to any other employees uh, who are not working on that particular project so uh, avoid unnecessary copying and these are those practical notes and practical suggestions so never use any internal use only documents outside the company so whatever your internal documents should not be carried uh, outside the premises of the company and do not use any trash or recycling bins uh, so in fact use the shredders in fact we have shredder in our law office as well these are couple of practical notes and practical tips and again from legal standpoint uh, you can advise your clients that you should put labels such as confidential on your all sensitive and confidential documents you keep security all uh, it as well as physical security Uh, proper security adequate measures you ensure that your relevant data is disclosed to only need to know basis keep records keep uh, do not reveal prepare appropriate policies it policies and hold trainings uh, sessions and impart knowledge and uh, conduct educational trainings whether a company can sign an nda with a foreign employee can a company take action against foreign employees for disclosing information absolutely you can take it uh, now the question is about the jurisdiction or the forum of course uh, so if there is a breach and uh, irrespective of whether he is based in india or he is outsider or he is at site blah 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 you can if there is a breach from his end you can very well initiate action against he, him uh, it's now the question of whether to file it uh, whether do you have arbitration do you have uh, any other specific court uh, or dispute resolution clauses or not that's the secondary question but you can very well take uh, him to the task if uh, he he was found to be guilty of uh, disclosing confidential information if a employee has already disclosed the information could the company claim compensation for the actual losses yes of course so we discussed that so uh, you can file a suit for injunction as well as damages and if company finds out that he had already divulged that uh, information uh, company can very well claim the compensation from that errant employee or errant individual and uh, of course the duty would be on you to satisfy the quantum of damages uh, before courts but you can very well claim compensation uh, for unauthorized disclosure so my question is there are certain companies uh, which through their nda state that the confidentiality obligations shall survive only till the uh, till uh, i mean for a period of 2 years only so should a company especially the disclosing party accept this clause or should state that the confidentiality obligation shall survive uh, in perpetuity it depends on the nature of business the nature of confidential information right say for example in it sector or it domain they have the surviving clauses for a longer period uh, unlike say for example in other sectors or in other domains right so it depends on, as i said it's depends on the nature of business uh, depends on the uh, industrial domain depends on the exchange of that confidential information but we discussed that that survival clause uh, it still operates uh, it runs against that particular party 
uh, it can be in perpetuity but in perpetuity these are difficult to buy out and these are difficult to fly out uh, because generally even in it sector what are what you call programs or technology it gets outdated in couple of years so even nowadays couple of months time generally uh, the in perpetuity clauses are difficult to fly in uh, at the time of negotiation itself and uh, it is little bit challenging to convince the port Uh, that uh, these surviving clauses of confidentiality runs in perpetuity it's a little bit difficult but you can very well try not only for 2 years 5 years 10 years or uh, what a reasonable period because generally courts look for reasonable period uh, to have such negative covenants and especially post termination agreements what are the remedies available if anybody misuses our information in a verbal way or through whatsapp of course verbal again uh, uh, challenging to prove before courts uh, you will have to get out the witnesses uh, but in whatsapp of course it's a written communication you can take out the snapshot so if you have that documentary evidence uh, you can very well go ahead because it, it can be considered as a document evidence before courts you can very well put put your case and file for uh, suit for injunction and damages but verbally uh, as i said uh, 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 as a challenging one because you will have to then uh, bring out witnesses to uh, depose testify uh, that this was uh, disclosed and yes uh, it happened can nda include non disclosure of salary even after the end of employment <laughs> trick and interesting one say for example most uh, yeah it can be but again uh for example background agencies uh, they ask for revelation of uh, all past records of employees uh, then there are uh, exceptions or circumstances where company may have to uh, disclose it say for example for filing returns or giving data information to statutory or tax authorities of course that can be a exception under uh, under disclosure of confidential information but that can be uh, of course uh, discuss with the company uh, generally even uh, what we have seen nowadays generally even uh, employ uh, employers or companies they do not reveal the salaries or remuneration or the structure of uh, salary uh, amongst the uh, employees as well right so even employees are not permitted to talk about their own uh, salary structure with their colleagues or peers uh, right so it's unwritten one but that's a good one uh, you can very well try uh, to negotiate with the company on this point and company would not divulge even companies they have policies that one should not divulge uh, remuneration structure with even other co employees so company would also welcome that can data be shared on we transfer website for uh, sharing huge data to third party and is it a reliable source or not we transfer it's more of the technical question right so in fact you are now exposed so you are taking your risk you are transferring data through these kind of mediums and uh, you are at risk and uh, so it's a more of technical question whether there is a leakage or not and what would happen so you should take you should deploy and uh, appropriate measures and you should use the standard and appropriate tools or standard tools uh, which are trustworthy right because uh, anyways if there uh, uh, whatever happens to your data while transmitting and if there is a leakage or breach then uh, you would be at risk for filing criminal case for confidential information disclosure through data theft cyber police resist to file fir stating unless ownership of data is proved by the claimant if it will be covered under section 72 non cognizable is it non cognizable see generally yeah so it is a experience so sometimes yes of course because it is a defense or even police or generally they ask for uh, even courts or other defense lawyer or other side also ask th- uh, this question about the proprietary so now the burden is on plenty for the claimant or the complainant to prove that yes it was my data uh, it was my proprietary information it was unique one right so in fact we have been handling one case where uh, the police uh, uh, of course there was a breach of confidentiality there was a theft of in fact source code so in courts and in uh, before police authorities as well so we had to convince both of them because we uh, the client we were into unique uh, software product uh, which maps about the product comparison and erp etc 
so that is very technical one so there was no such product available in the market so we had to show this uh, history of the similar products that all these products they came in later so it is our product uh, which we initiated which we found out which we invented and then uh, both of course police authorities and of course court uh, both admitted our claim and uh, of course the matter is still going on but then the burden burden is on you on you means the plaintiff claimant or complainant to satisfy these authority authorities that it was your confidential and it was your own proprietary information is a stamp duty applicable to be paid on ndas uh, in maharashtra jurisdiction within maharashtra yes of course you can refer the article uh, that uh, uh, five uh, you you can refer that article 5 of course you can pay because if there is a indemnity clause you will have to pay the stamp duty otherwise you get risk of getting your document impounded during the trial or during the court proceedings uh, that is a very nominal fee so it is advisable you pay the court fee uh, stamp fee on those documents when you execute ndas if someone as an empl- as an ex employee of a company create a product which is inspired by their design but it is patentable and the company goes to court by saying its use of their confidential information and charge for the same what is the available remedy in such case see if it is inspired again there is a narrow line or there is a thin line right so which we discussed the case where employee uses his own skill set uh, uh, skill set and knowledge he applies his brain and mind right Uh, but whether then we will have to of course we'll have to decide for uh, that thin line whether confidential information was used with a trade secret was used for his commercial gain right so whether it's inspire but it is uh, he will have to uh, so of course uh, there are two notions or two concepts uh, uh, if you are a company you will have to show that there is a similarity and if you are employee uh, or you are defendant then you will have to point out the differences how your product differs from the company's product so you will have to play it upon so you will have to show similarities or differences and you will have to show how it was inspired but it's not a copy cut and paste or what copy paste model so i employed my own efforts capital blah, uh, intellectual property and then i developed this product or this machine or this drawing right uh, but it is not a complete copy a uh, complete uh, replica of the earlier uh, product or machine or drawing so, it's been privilege and uh, thank you to plea as well and thank you to my colleague rucha in fact she prepared this uh, presentation so she helped uh, help me a lot on this uh, preparing uh, presentation so thank you everyone and uh, good luck to everyone as well